new purity and a new impetus way of living. Oh yes, when you truly seek Jesus, you can expect to overcome sin. But not only that, secondly, when you truly seek Jesus, there's something else you can get. You can expect to become his disciple. And let me tell you something right now. I don't trip nobody up. But discipleship is costly. Discipleship is probably the greatest deterrent to salvation. Discipleship is probably why a lot of folks won't give their life to Christ. Why? Because in order to be a disciple, you have to deny yourself. In order to be a true disciple, in order to be a true follower of Christ, you have to realize that it is not free, it's costly. Now I hear you saying Jesus paid it all. And Jesus did, but listen, Jesus paid it all for your salvation. But the Bible says in order to follow him, you got to deny yourself, pick up your own cross so that you can follow him. Oh yes, and you know the problem, the problem with many saints today is they just don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to give. They got so many excuses as to why they can't give. I don't have enough. But let me tell you something. You don't have, you cannot afford. If you can't afford to tithe, I come by and tell you, you can't afford not to tithe. They don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to sacrifice their time. It's too cold outside. I'm tired. I've got to go to work. It's snowing. And then you have some that don't even make up excuses. They just don't do what they're going to do. And listen, listen, they'll tell you in a minute, I'm not going to be at the church every time the door is open. Well, let me tell you something. If you expect God to be there every time you call on him, you are a person in your heart that for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Oh, yes, 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 they have. A social mentality. Yeah. By this in society, generally, everybody wants to get in line for something that's free. But when you tell them that they have to work for it, or they have to pay into it, the line suddenly gets shorter. Oh yes, I'm reminded of the great leader of Reformation, Martin Luther. He said a religion that gives nothing a religion that costs nothing, a religion that suffers nothing, is a religion that's worth nothing. How many of you know that you have to apply some muscle to your mission? Oh yes, this thing we call Christianity is a relationship. And like any relationship, it takes time and it takes effort to build. Just like a husband and wife, a marriage, it takes time and it takes hard work. Just like being a parent to a child, let me tell you something that's the easiest thing in the world to do is to make it. But let me tell you something, when you got to raise it, when you got to deny yourself for it, oh, don't be somebody. Uh, you, you have to learn that you have to invest time. Our trust, when you invest your time and when you invest your efforts in Christ, our trust and invulnerability will grow. We become well-prepared soldiers ready to battle what life throws at us. You want to know why you're not overcoming some of the victories in your life? It's because you're not sold out totally to Christ. You don't yield to Him. It's still your thing, but the moment you give it over to Him, I guarantee you, you'll start experiencing some victory. Oh yes, if your service, if your service that which Christ calls discipleship has been deterred, the thing that's stopping you from accepting Christ as your Savior, let me give you a preview or a test that God will administer when you stand before Him at the gates of heaven. Uh, the Word of God, let me tell you something, it wasn't just left here for casual reading, it wasn't just left here to entertain us, but it was left here to help us get through life. And when you allow something to deter you from what Christ would have you to be, listen, at the close of your life, God's question will not be how much have you gotten, but it'll be how much have you given. It won't be how much have you won, but it'll be what have you done. It won't be how much have you saved, but it'll be about how much have you sacrificed.
sacrifice. It won't be how much have you been honored, but how much have you loved and served others. So if you're genuinely seeking Jesus, be prepared to become his disciple. Oh yes, when you genuinely seek Jesus, you can expect to overcome sin and you can expect to be one of his disciples. And then there's one more thing. Lastly, when you expect, or when you when you truly seek Jesus, you can expect to solidify your eternal future. In other words, when you when you truly seek Jesus, what lies ahead is no longer a concern of yours. When you truly seek Jesus, uh, let me tell you, that's a that, that's that, that, this is a tough one for most people because many can't seem to wrap their minds around the concept of eternity. Uh, we think, you know, and I tell young people downtown all the time, um, you know, my question to them is, what, what do you see yourself after graduation? And that question, what that question does is it forces them to see themselves in their 20s. It forces them to see themselves in their 30s. And many times it just draw a blank face because we live in a technical uh, age. My son plays on, on that little, little game, uh, little Nintendo, I forgot what they call that little game. What is it called? The DS, that's it. The DS. And they, they play these games. And most of our kids have the Wii system or the PlayStation. And, and, and they'll, they'll play these games. And when they get killed, all they have to do is hit the replay button. And they can jump back in the game. But let me tell you something. In the game of life, uh, there's no replay. There's, I mean, listen, you can't just uh, play the game over. You got to have trust and faith that after the game is over, there's something better. For you. Oh yes, 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 yes. Many can't seem to understand eternity. As a result, they'll ask questions like, is eternity really two lifetimes? Or is it three lifetimes? Or is it even four? But let me put it to you this way. If one grain of sand represented a million years, then all of the sand in the world still would not represent eternity. Because you can't measure. Oh, help me somebody. You, 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 listen, listen. Everyone has to face eternity. No one goes into the ground and stay. Let me help somebody. Let me, let, I know, listen, I know you, you, you used to go into the cemetery and planting people in the ground or maybe you plant them in the vault or, or, or you know, but let me tell you, you don't stay in the ground. You don't stay in the vault. So the question is not will you face eternity, but the question is where will you face eternity? Listen, man is made of body, mind, and soul. Your body and mind are subjected to all of life's exterior forces and stimuli. And your soul is forced to live in the home that you prepare for. Show me somebody. And so in other words, if you deposit trash, your soul lives in a garbage dump. But if you deposit the treasures of heaven, your soul lives in bliss. When your body and your mind can 